so welcome back friends the previous class we have seen the intensity slicing very important topic this one so uh, apart from yeah this image as well very important thing we understood here why intensity slicing how it is done how we move that plane how we are decided uh, the upper upper end of the plane has one color the lower end of the plane has another color and so on all these n number of things have been seen in this particular slide then we had we also saw very important thing if uh, very important thing was this we had only one plane and uh, and similar example or a similar representation you can say was this figure wherein we tried to see that if it is below a line it is one color if it is above a line it is another color so this is also what we saw then moving at friends we also saw in this figure that uh, here we have only one plane this could be extended to more number of planes like uh, li is one plane like that we have we can have n number of planes like li plus 1 li plus 2 and so on and we can get n number of colors now in order to understand this into more deeper way we will take up some examples that is practical examples okay so will move ahead friends will come to this slide now so whatever the image you can see right now it is a practical image which has been obtained by intensity slicing so you can see the first part that is 6.2a is a gray scale image you can see it's a monochromatic image wherein it is in the form of a black and white image so the image is of a picard thyroid phantom it is a test pattern the name of the test pattern is picard thyroid phantom so it is a thyroid checking image okay so what is the best thing after intensity slicing what we got is 66.2b wherein we can observe somewhere around eight color regions has been obtained in your 6.20b earlier we had only two colors it's a monochrome image one is black and another one is white but in 6.20b once we do intensity slicing we have got somewhere around eight color regions and all these regions appear with constant intensity all the whatever the regions you can see in the uh, uh, 6.20p have appeared with a constant intensity for example you can see the left lobe whatever the left lobe you can see in the figure here there is a hollow space right you can see here in the left lobe there is a hollow space this hollow space is quite dull it could not be seen properly in the gray scale image this could be very difficult for us to pick up the variations so therefore in if you see the color image the color image clearly shows eight different regions of constant constant intensity and being and you can also see here one for each color used that is everyone has a every different color so therefore you can clearly see this red thing here these two red things here which was not able to distinguish in this 6.20a in this figure it was not visible but when you see in this figure it is visible and you can see there is some deformity if you observe this uh, gray scale image if you observe this gray scale image you would say that in this region there is no problem in this region there is no problem but when you see a color image you can find out in this region as well as in this region there are some problems that's why you can see them in a different color is that clear friends okay so very important thing here is um, the gray scale whatever you can see was divided into intervals and a different color was assigned to each region without regard for the meaning of the gray scale levels in the image so therefore you can say interest in that case was simply to view the different gray levels constituting the image so intensity slicing is very much meaningful in many of the roles wherein we would like to get some physical characteristics of the image so by doing your intensity intensity slicing such things could be easily obtained so to enhance this more we'll move to the next example so in this example friends you can see an x ray image of a welding of a weld the horizontal dark region whatever you can see in the first image has several cracks right 
so the bright white streaks which are running horizontally through the middle of the image that is this portion we are speaking of this portion we are speaking of this portion so whatever the white that line you can see which is running horizontally through the middle of the image it is known that when there is any crack in a weld the full strength of the x-rays going through the object saturate the image sensor on the other side of the object so when such saturation occurs you can see clearly that there is some problem in the welding so therefore if the intensity levels of the 255 if the intensity levels are 255 in an 8 bit image which come from such system they easily help you to get the problem in the weld and these were very these would be very difficult for the human eye to judge and analyze where you can see that what i'm trying to tell is whatever the welding uh, deformity you can see here welding deformity you can see here in this figure these could be easily identified by an human eye when we do image slicing so the image which we get after doing image slicing is this one so when we do image slicing you can easily see the more number of problem is having in this region the more number of problem is having in this region the more number of problem is having in this region this would have been very difficult for a human eye to identify if the color intensity slicing would have been not done so therefore it's very much important for us to do intensity slicing and when such an image is obtained much most of the time humans can arrive to the conclusion very easily with very less errors that's why you can say the exact incentive intensity values or the range of values which one is trying to find out can be easily done with the help of the intensity slicing so therefore you can say intensity slicing is a very powerful tool in terms of visualization especially when we have n number of images so this is very important friends whatever we discussed just now how so i hope so you are getting a, a feel of how intensity slicing is helping you to identify the images more clearly by seeing this example as well as by seeing the second example of a x-ray image next to move ahead we'll go through one more example so this is very uh, interesting example you can say so these are the images of a satellite now the problem here is the problem statement is whenever you go to the tropical regions it is very difficult to enter those tropical regions why because they have a dense forest there so therefore accurate measurements using ground based sensors are difficult and they are very expensive to acquire because the total rainfall there are even more difficult to obtain especially because they occur over the ocean so therefore <coughs> tropical regions measurement of rainfall is very difficult then what could be solution for this the solution for this is nothing but very simple with the help of a satellite so what we do we leave a satellite on these regions using these satellites the satellites will be taking up the images then using the images of the satellite we will try to get the rainfall figures so therefore one such satellite we have is trmm satellite which stands for tropical rainfall measuring mission so what this satellite does now this satellite has very important things one important thing among it is it has three sensors which are designed to detect the rain and the next very important thing it has is a radar which is used to detect the precipitation and an imager which is a microwave imager so remember friends your satellite has three important things which are which we can call as sensors one is to detect a rain the other one is a radar which is used to detect the precipitation the third one is an imager to take the images which is a microwave imager and finally you have a scanner a scanner which would scan all these things and you will be getting the images so whatever the result from the various rain sensors we get that would be taken up and are processed so that we would find out the average rainfall for a given period of time 
in the area which we are trying to monitor with the help of the sensors. So from these estimates, whatever we are speaking right now, it is not very much difficult to generate the grayscale images. So whatever you can see in the first figure there, it is nothing but a grayscale image which is obtained by using these measures. What are these measures I am speaking? Using your sensors, using the radar, using the imager and using the scanner, you get the grayscale images. And the intensities of these grayscale images directly corresponds to the amount of rainfall. With each pixel here is representing a physical land area. Now, the size of this pixel depends on the resolution of the sensors. So, whatever you can see in figure 6.22a is one such figure wherein the area is monitored by a satellite with slightly higher, higher horizontal band in the middle one third of the picture. Okay, so this is one thing, friends. Moving ahead. Of the, moving ahead with the discussion of the same thing, if you go to figure 6.22b, so you visual examination would say that the picture of rainfall patterns is quite difficult, it is very difficult to obtain. So therefore, in figure 6.22b, what we have done is, we have coded the intensity levels from 0 to 255. Now, values which are towards the blue signify low values of rainfall and with the opposite being true for red. So whenever there is red, we say that the rainfall is more. Okay. Now, whatever the scale tops out at pure red will give you a rainfall greater than 20 inches. So if you can see in figure 6.22c, you can see that there are some red spots. You can observe that there are some red spots. So whatever these red spots are there, you can see here, these are my red spots. Whatever these red spots are there, they are telling that you have a rainfall greater than 20 inches. Okay, so this is how the whole uh, perception has been obtained with the help of your image intensity processing. Okay, now what 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 all did we do here then? This is nothing but a simple intensity slicing technique which we have obtained, which we have used, and which you have implied on 6.22a on this figure and using on this figure and using this intensity slicing we we move to this figure finally we change it into the c figure wherein we can clearly see which are my which are my high rainfall areas which are my low rainfall areas. The ones with a high red color and yellow patches are higher rainfall areas. The ones with the dark green, these are nothing but the lower rainfall areas. Now, what are the uses? Why we need to do it? This type of data will help our meteorologist to calibrate the ground-based rain monitoring systems with greater precision than any time before. So earlier we were not having uh, uh, so much precision, so much precision to decide where should I place my uh, ground monitoring, rain monitoring systems. But when we have such techniques, when we have such techniques, it becomes very easy for us to place those systems. So here I will be ending this friends, that is uh, the whole thing regarding your intensity slicing. Intensity slicing is very much important. Many times they have asked this in VTU. Please go through it very carefully. And they also asked these examples. What are the examples we have discussed? You can give any one of the examples with proper explanation. Okay, friends. So this is all regarding today's class. In the next class, we will again move to one more very important and very interesting thing wherein we would like to do intensity to color transformations. You have an intensity, but from the intensity, you need to transform it to a particular color. That we will be doing in the next class. Thank you for watching friends. If you have any doubts, anytime, please don't hesitate to ask me or any one of our faculty. We are always happy to help you. Thank you.